the way to Christmas is called the season of Advent. That means arrival, or rather the happy anticipation of an arrival, you might say. And no one exemplifies that journey so much as Mary. So let's start our Advent journeys with, with her. Advent begins with hope, but that hope wasn't simply within Mary's dreams or plans or expectations, but within her womb. And paradox within paradox, she carried the seed of God's hope for the world. And this is where it all begins. Luke chapter one, the angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word of God will ever fail. I'm the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. There's a lot of coded language here. The royalty of Jesus, born of David's line, the never ending kingdom over Jacob's descendants. It sounds very nationalistic, like the typical idea of what Messiah was. But the overshadowing of a virgin so that the Holy One will be born, will be called the Son of God. So much mystery here. And what does this mean to us and how do we live in the light and truth of it? It's Mary's hope that is the beauty of this passage, because hope is faith looking forwards. I think it was William Faulkner who said, you cannot swim for new horizons until you have courage to lose sight of the shore. And her hope lent her that that courage she's very young she's very isolated she doesn't know what's going to happen next we're, we're we're given a picture of a devout young woman who is betrothed to be married but is completely innocent except for her loving attention to what god's doing and so like Abraham or perhaps like Ruth, she stepped out in faith into God's promise. Now, I was reading this passage recently. I'm just going to read it out to you. Here it is on the screen. And it resonates with the choices of Mary. It's a picture of hope, of faith looking forward. And I believe it's what you and I are called into, because right now we're not just considering the faith of Mary and the hope of Mary, we're thinking how that relates to how we live. And this is what this lady said. Here you go. I have come to accept the feeling of not knowing where I'm going. And I've trained myself to love it because it is only when we're suspended in midair with no landing in sight, we force our wings to unravel and at last begin our flight and as we fly we still may not know where we're going to but the miracle is in the unfolding of the wings you may not know where you're going but you know that so long as you spread your wings the wind will carry you so i know that's from a different context and it's different from mary and it's different from, from you but do you get the gist that we're in this position we don't know we don't know, but we trust. We don't know what we believe. We don't know, but we hope. And the punchline of Mary's encounter with the angel is the clause, no word from God will ever fail, because this 
is what we do now. This is, we're putting our foot down on that rock in the middle of the stream, and we're finding that it is definite that God is with us. He can be relied on, and it's definite. And you remember the first chapter of Genesis, God speaks the world into being. And she's saying no word from God will ever fail because this is God speaking and I believe it. And remember those powerful words from the old hymn. He speaks and listening to his voice, new life, the dead receive. You remember the pile of bleached bones that Ezekiel saw and say to prophesy to the bones, see them come alive. It's the advent of the impossible. And Mary is anticipating her journey is one of happy anticipation, anticipation which begins at her trust in the God who speaks. And God speaks life into what is barren. Remember, we're brought into Elizabeth, who's the generation above Mary, and saying, well, she is bearing a child as well, John the Baptist. And it's like the chaos of pre-creation, like the heart of one who doesn't know God. And like Mary herself, life, life is beginning right here. And she says, no word from God will ever fail. For if God is, then all things are possible. When we let go of our unbelief, when we let go of our trust in ourself and our flawed understanding based on what we think is true and possible, we can receive the life of the Holy Spirit. That's what Mary had to do. She had to lean back into that understanding she had to come to the realization that she didn't know everything that she couldn't know everything and that what she was experiencing was so much bigger than she'd ever encountered before she'd come to the point of admitting that in the presence of an infinite god no impossibility existed so she was in uncharted waters and so are you so am i Amen. But God is with us. Isn't that true of us? We, we want to have everything under control. We want to know everything so that we're not surprised, not blindsided by the stuff that comes at us. But we find ourselves in impossible situations with fewer and fewer options. And life can seem to close in on us. Problems, issues, crises. And the words of Gabriel represent a lifeline in a sea of calamitous possibility he says nothing is impossible with god this is where i stake my hope and to believe in god means to believe all things are possible to pray to be able to face today or tomorrow requires us to believe in the power of the holy spirit to do what seems to be impossible and the gospel requires a response and when the Lord comes to us in the power of the Holy Spirit, we receive new life and there's spiritual regeneration and revelation. And we realize we're being given an opportunity. Do you remember that the opportunities come to all the characters in the Advent journey? Think of the journey of the Magi. Think of the decisions of Herod or the innkeeper or Joseph. Think of the decisions, think of the choices that those people made. But Mary's is the first one that we think of. And it is of absolute trust and belief that the opportunity that's come to her is to be grasped. This is her response. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. And that's what Paul called the obedience that comes from faith. So Mary heard and responded with saving faith. But you've heard the same call. So how do you respond? Because the Lord is with you too. And the Holy Spirit brings you the life of Christ to be born in you. Do you remember the Christmas carol? Whenever we sing it, I always think how radical and strange it is. Oh, a holy child of, his, of uh, Bethlehem, be born in us today seems impossible to believe, yet nothing is impossible with God. Faith is believing in possibility. So Mary becomes the Lord's servant. She enters into the obedience that comes from faith and becomes a bearer of Christ. 
and she experienced at first hand the life-giving power of his spirit. But what happens next is your call. What happens to you is your call, your decision. Lord, we pray as we enter into this Advent season that we may begin a journey of faith that leads us into the presence of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you today.